horizontal split case pumps, maintenance and assembly video. We would like to thank you for taking the time to view this Peerless Pump Company presentation. All referenced bulletins in this video, as well as all other Peerless product information, can be found at www.peerlesspump.com. The specific product bulletin references in this presentation can be found in the IOM section. Before starting disassembly of the pump, it is recommended that you obtain a set of certain spare parts. As always, we recommend that only certified technicians perform maintenance and repair work, and that only OEM parts are used. Assistance can be obtained from a Peerless Pump representative or authorized distributors to acquire the necessary supply of spare parts. To obtain quick and accurate service when ordering spare parts, please be prepared, if possible, to provide the following information. Pump size and type as noted on nameplate. Pump serial number as noted on nameplate. The name and number of the parts as shown on the sectional drawings referenced in Peerless Pump Bulletin number 485 and quantity required of each item. For a list of parts and referenced product numbers, please review the bulletin number 485 in the IOM section of peerlesspump.com. It is important to note that we do not recommend the reuse of gaskets, O-rings, packing rings, or ball bearings. To keep delays to a minimum when pump repairs are required, we suggest that the following spare parts be stocked. One set of bearings, bearing seals, and bearing cover gaskets. One set of shaft sleeves and sleeve O-rings. One set of casing rings. One set of impeller rings. One casing gasket. For installations where downtime is critical, a complete rotating element consisting of one set of packing rings and packing, which can be obtained from your local supplier, should be on hand. If you have any questions about technician training, locating the closest distributor to purchase parts or complete pumps, or need additional information, please visit our website. We again thank you for the opportunity and trust you will find the following presentation helpful. Shut down the pump and disconnect power to the pump driver before starting any repairs. Disengage the coupling halves. You may want to refer to the coupling manufacturer's instructions in this step. Remove the nuts from the gland bolts and remove packing glands from the shaft. The packing gland halves are separable. Remove all nuts or cap screws from the upper casing and from the bearing caps. Match mark bearing caps to lower casing. Use the jack screws on the bottom side of the lower casing split flange to separate the upper and lower casings. Turn the jack screws back below the split flange surface to avoid reassembly interference. Note, on some models, you will need to back off the screws on the top casing. Attach hoist to customer furnished eye bolt in upper casing. Use eye bolt to lift upper casing only. Eye bolt must have one half 13 UNC external thread. Place slings around the shaft near the bearing housings and lift rotating element from lower casing. Tap lightly on the underside of the bearing housings to separate the housings from the brackets. Place rotating element in a convenient workplace. In order to loosen set screws and remove the coupling half, you will need to tap from the back of the hub or use a puller. Remove coupling key and outboard deflector. Take out cap screws to remove bearing covers and the gasket. Now, remove the inboard bearing cover seal from cover only if the replacement of the seal is required. Remove retaining ring from the outboard end of shaft. Remove casing rings. On most pumps, this may be done before removing the coupling half. Remove packing rings, lantern rings if provided, and stuffing box bushings. 
Loosen shaft sleeve set screws, then loosen shaft sleeves with a spanner wrench. Note that the sleeve A has right-handed thread. Sleeve B has left-hand thread. Now, remove sleeves from shaft. Note that a seal between the shaft and sleeve is made with an O-ring and a groove in the sleeve. We recommend replacement of this O-ring. Remove the impeller with an arbor press or a tube and hammer. Note, the interference between impeller hub inside diameter and shaft outside diameter meets ANSI B4.1 standards for preferred limits and fits for cylindrical parts and corresponds to standard fit LC1. Remove impeller key. Refer to the disassembly instructions for disassembly to the point of removing bearings from the shaft. Normally, they should be removed only to clean and inspect after operating trouble is traced to the bearings. Visually inspect parts for damage affecting serviceability or sealing. Emphasize inspection of mating parts having relative motion, wear rings for example. Perform detail inspection as follows. Check O-rings and bearing cover gaskets for cracks, nicks, or tears. Check the packing rings for excessive compression, fraying, or shredding, embedded particles, such as dirt or metal. Replace if any one of these mentioned items are defective in any way. Mount the shaft between centers or on V-blocks. Check for eccentricity throughout the entire length with a dial indicator. Eccentricity must not exceed 3 thousandths inch total indicator reading. Check that threads are clean and sharp. Surfaces on which bearings mount must be smooth, have a finish of 32 micro inches or better, and the shoulders should be square and free from nicks. Measure the outside diameter of the impeller wear surface or impeller ring and the inside diameter of the casing ring. Compute the diametrical clearance, ID minus OD, and compare with the limits given in Table 1. If measured diametrical clearance exceeds two times the values in Table 1, repair to restore design clearance is recommended. Inside diameter surface of casing ring must be smooth and concentric with ring outside diameter. Examine impeller passages for cracks, dents, gouges, or embedded material. If damaged, you will need to make needed repairs in the following manner. If inside diameter of casing rings is grooved, scored, or eccentric, replace the casing rings. If impeller wear surfaces or impeller rings are defective, the impeller must be machined to install new impeller rings. Be sure machining is concentric with impeller bore. Use care not to reduce hub outside diameter when you are machining off of old impeller rings. Review Table 1 of Bulletin Number 4851938 for impeller case wear ring diametrical clearance. Note, clearances in Table 1 of Bulletin Number 4851938 are for standard bronze or cast iron fitted pumps. For materials with a tendency to gall, such as stainless steel, Increase clearances by 100th inch. Note, for bronze impellers and rings, the rings are shrunk on the hub according to standard fit FN4 of ANSI B4.1. Hardened impeller rings are installed according to ANSI B4.1, standard fit for FN1. Install new impeller rings on the impeller. You will need to shrink or press depending on material. The impeller ring ID is factory machined for proper fit. You will need to put in a set screw or tack weld the wear ring to secure. Note, standard pumps are furnished without impeller rings. The wear surface is an integral part of the impeller. Impeller wear rings may be field installed by machining. Refer to note following paragraph 2-2B of bulletin number 485-1938 for standard fits to be produced when making such repair. Replace impellers which cannot be salvaged by such repair. Replace worn shaft sleeves. Straighten or replace shafts having excess runout eccentricity.